Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to do something that a lot of you have asked for in the comments section through direct messages, the whole nine yards you guys have been reaching out. I've been talking in previous videos about knock retardation or timing being pulled from the cylinders of my motor. And what you want is zero across all cylinders for the maximum performance of your car. Uh, in a couple videos ago, I stated that by adding some ethanol into your pump gas and bringing that ethanol content up to about E15, E20, you're actually able to provide better performance to your car and you might see some of that timing retardation that's coming out of your cylinders be gone and running zero across the board. The goal is to get zero across all five cylinders. I'm trying to dumb this down. Uh, I learned it just last year and I'm trying to make it so other people can get the maximum performance out of their RS3 or TTRS, same thing. Today I'm going to be using VCDS or old school talk VAGCOM to be doing this. Uh, just I'll go through the different parameters you need to actually log and what you need to do on the street to actually perform the log and I'll see how well my car's running. Right now I'm running the 93 octane file, stage two from Unitronic, but I'm using 92 octane fuel because that's what I have available to me as well as additional E85. Right now I'm running about an E19, E20 blend in hopes that any type of correction that's being seen on the cylinders will be gone and I'll get the maximum performance out of my vehicle. So the first thing you're gonna need is an actual cable to run the VCDS program. I'll put in the link below where you can actually buy the cables from. There's multiple different cables you can use. You plug it into your OBD2 port and then into a laptop. And on the laptop, you're gonna to need to download a program called VCDS. You're gonna to need to open that up. Then you're gonna to need to select the parameters that you're gonna to wanna to log. I'm simply going to be showing you guys the different uh, corrections in each cylinder, not the boost or anything like that that you can also uh, use VCDS to log. So the next one's engine. Loads up. Next one is advanced measuring values. And then over here, these are all the different parameters that you can actually log. When you click on them, it pulls it up and will give you the actual readings. So that's the engine speed, that's my coolant temperature, and obviously this is live. There's power onto the car. I haven't started the car, but there's power going to it, and it'll actually log all of these parameters. Vehicle speed, it's not in motion, it's at zero. So I've actually made a pre-selected file that shows the type of ones that I want, and that is the timing. So these are the parameters you're going to want to log. Engine speed, timing angle retardation of cylinder two, three, four, and five, your intake air temperature, the timing ignition or timing adjustment on cylinder one, and the relative load value. So as you can see right now, they're all zero, car's not on, but it shows an intake air temp of 43 degrees Celsius. So. Now that that's done, you're going to need to go up here, group the requests, then you're gonna to need to hit turbo. Basically, that's asking for more data to be pulled through because on VCDS, it only goes so fast. There's only so much data it can pull through the cable, so that is to get the maximum amount of information out of the ECU into your computer so you can run an accurate log. The next thing you're going to need to do is hit log. Then you're going to need to name the file. So what I like to do, because it gives it this predefined file name, is erase that all, and then name it whatever you need to name. In today, it happens to be December uh, 23rd today. So I'm gonna name it December 23rd, and right now on my ethanol gauge, it shows E19. So, E19. So as you can see there, I've named the file. Now it's ready to log. Computer set up, plugged in. They'll actually put this on your seat because this needs to stay on, up and running while you're going to do your log. So the cable needs to plug in. I like to usually run it back and beyond here, in behind all your levers and everything like that, your gear shifts, and there you go. So it's all plugged in and ready to go. Next step. Let's get this car going. Okay, so we have the system up and running. It's all plugged in. VCDS is ready to log. The name of the file has been chosen, but now you need to actually get the car in motion. 
What they recommend, at least Unitronic recommends, and probably most of the other tuners, is you're in fourth gear. Now, because we're on public roads, it's very, very back roads. There's no other cars around, but for the sake of speed, I'm not on a dyno, I'm not on a racetrack. I prefer to actually log in third gear because you're not going as uh, fast. So what they want to see is a log from about 2000 or 2200 RPM, wide open throttle, foot to the floor, all the way up to red line. You're gonna wanna put your car in manual, so not just with your paddles, but actually shift down into sport and then over into manual. That way, when you hit red line, you'll actually hit red line. It won't shift into the next gear because you don't want that with your logs. All you're doing is pulling one gear. That's it. Wide open throttle from 2000 to 2200 RPM. That's where you start. And then you go all the way to red line and then you're done. And that's the end of the log. That's going to give them a pretty good view of how well your car is running at wide open throttle, which as much as uh, you want your car to be an excellent daily driver, that's where to give them, that's how you can give them the information they need to make sure your car is running optimally. So we're gonna get it on the road right now. We'll get a little bit of speed and then I'll walk you through the process. Empty road, empty street, nice and clear, straight as an arrow. You wanna get the car in third gear. You're in third gear, you're cruising now. You're about 2000 to 2200 RPM. You're gonna reach over on your laptop and hit where it says start. Now it's logging, floor it. And it's going and it's going and it's going and it's going. Red line, shift gears, get it up to seven. You're cruising, gently slow down and you're gonna to wanna to go back over to your laptop and hit stop. That's your log. That is the bit of information now that the we're going to put, well, first of all, it's gonna be put into an Excel spreadsheet, a CS, CSV file. Then we're gonna take that file and put it onto an actual website, which will convert it into a graph, which makes it much, much easier to read. So we're finished the log, we've pulled over to a safe spot, turned off the car, unplugged everything, everything's done, everything's good to go. Now you're actually gonna to need to go to a website called datazap.me. Datazap you're gonna then have to make an actual account. So I've already done so and I'm going to do that now. All right, so now you're actually in the program. You can make your own file, or sorry, screensaver, whatever you want, your wallpaper. Then you're gonna to go to upload log. You're going to upload the English CSV. Then it's going to ask you to actually find the file on your computer. You can either browse or you can just pull it up. I happen to already have it ready to rock and roll. There's a file that will be created or a, a sorry, a folder that will be called logs. That's going to be under your VCDS folder. I have a hundred <laughs> logs in here because I do this all the time. You're going to drag it and drop it in the appropriate spot shows that it's been there. You need to scroll down to the bottom and then here you're going to have an option. Do you want to make this record public or not? It really doesn't matter. There might be people scouring through this to see your logs, but I doubt it. So we're going to hit save. Right now it's going to populate an actual graph of that run in the data you just did. So there it is. It's pretty cool. So what that's showing right there is engine speed. So, goes all the way up to the 7200 red line, just slightly over. Now we're going to go through the different cylinders to see if any timing was pulled. Cylinder 2. Beauty. It's a zero across the board, running perfectly. Cylinder 3. Perfect. Zero across the board. This is what I like to see. Four. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> across the board. Five. Oh yeah, all five. Now we're gonna go to cylinder one and it's not going to show us the timing retardation on cylinder one. It's going to show us the actual timing curve. So what you're gonna wanna look for here is to make sure that you're not having any weird, I don't know, little bloops or ups and downs or major, you'll see like a major dip. But what you're watching for is right here. That's the main part. So you start out at 1.5 degrees of ignition and it goes all the way up, 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 up to hitting 15 degrees max ignition. 
So that was an extremely good run and the car is running optimally. So if you're using a standard run of the mill production file on 91 octane or 93 octane, you do this run in this exact setup, but just on regular pump gas, I can guarantee you, you will see timing being pulled on individual cylinders, possibly all of them. On pump gas, that isn't a terrible thing. If you have a couple degrees here and there, it is what it is, but you could get a bit more out of the tune if perhaps your octane was a bit higher. And that's why I run a little bit of E85 in my pump gas to allow for more power to make sure that the engine is getting the absolute most, or I can get the most out of the engine possible. That was an unbelievable run. I hit zero across the board. Engine's running phenomenally on the fuel that I'm using. So that is money. Uh, what we have here in Vancouver, sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of the time, uh, timing is being pulled on all cylinders because our pump gas, as many other places around the world, is not very good. We have a 94 octane fuel. And for those of you that watched uh, my dyno video, I spoke about it and mentioned that it doesn't have any ethanol in it. And you might run a 93 octane uh, a tune and you'll still get timing pulled because of just the properties of ethanol and how it works without having any in it, especially force induction engines, uh, they suffer. So I always like to add more ethanol. As I've stated in previous videos, I like to play with about E15 to E20. I usually see the maximum benefit of that on pump gas. Some people go higher than that, E25, all the way up to E30 being the max, but I usually don't like to play that high unless for whatever reason, I'm uh, doing a beta file or something like that and testing it out and seeing what kind of octane I need. But I hope that was a quick and easy tutorial for those of you that are looking to data log your RS3s. Uh, like I said before, I'll put in the description below where you can actually get that VCDS cable, where you can order it from. It's called Ross Tech. That's the name of the company. Uh, get that in, get, your, get it plugged in, download the program, fire it up, use datazap.me, uh, free website. It's fantastic tool to put it all into a nice chart so you can see, so you don't have to read that giant file if you're not too sure on how to read it. Uh, but what you're looking for is zero across the boards. If you're running an ethanol file, an E85 file, you really should be at zero. You should not see any timing being pulled. Uh, for those of you that have been on my journey for a long time with me now, uh, if you remember back when I was on Custom Code, I kept having up to five degrees of timing being pulled in cylinder five using similar logs or similar logging techniques and uh, we couldn't figure it out. So it's a good way to make sure that you're getting as much performance as you can out of your car to make sure it's healthy, to make sure it's running properly. As stated before, there are a lot of other parameters you can actually log with VCDS. It's a fantastic tool to use to make sure it's all running well. Uh, but for the sake of today's video, I just wanted you guys to see how to log timing and to make sure that the fuel you're putting in is of the appropriate, uh, appropriate octane level and you aren't seeing that timing being pulled on your cylinders. So I hope this was uh, helpful and beneficial to those that were interested. Uh, I've mentioned a few times in my videos before what I do, so I just wanted to kind of lay it out there for you guys in case uh, some of you were interested. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and like and share if you haven't done so already. Uh, make sure you turn on your notification settings to make sure you get my videos when I put out a new upload. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I look forward to bringing you guys more content in the future.